In the PV Butcher amp, like other amps of 120 watts or more, when you initialize and turn on the power to the unit, the tr power transformer, uh, because it's an inductor, there is an inrush current. It can exceed the upper design limit of the transformer and the inrush current can also exceed the maximum allowable voltage for the reservoir caps and filter caps in the power supply and it can also exceed the maximum voltage requirement for the bridge diode rectifier. A way to take care of that is to use this, this thermistor. When the unit's turned on, it limits the current until it warms up, and when it warms up, the resistance decreases, and then everything stabilizes and the amp continues to work. It's important when you're changing out your filter capacitors and your reservoir capacitors to understand the power requirement of this thermistor. There's a limit to it. How many joules can it ha handle? And we have to, there, the size of joules. So we need to know something about the energy it can soak up and not exceed that energy. Uh, design limit. In this case is 36 joules. I will show you how to calculate that in just a moment. When you open up a power supply and it has been bled down, I've clipped off a ohm meter to either side of the thermistor. When it warms up, this is a negative temperature coefficient. As it warms up, the resistance decreases. This is a CL60. Watch the ohms as this, I hold on to it and start warming it up. It's been out in the shop for a little bit so it's going to take a little bit to warm up but you get the idea. It's dropping in temperature as the thermistor warms up from being in the shop overnight, being cold, to body temperature is dropping from 12.6, 12.1, and it will continue to drop. When the amp reaches operating temperature and amps warm up, it should be somewhere around 75 to 100 degrees, and this will drop the resistive value down to, say, less than 1 ohm. The PV Butcher amp has a thermistor, a current limiter, on the primary side of the power transformer. How do they size that? What are the ramifications about that? It is this black disc object on screen in the photo. That is not a capacitor, that is the thermistor. In this case, they have sized a CL60 size thermistor. There are charts and graphs for all this and tables. That, so today I'm going to go through what is a thermistor? What is it used for? Why do we have it here? It's all about inrush current. In the video I did for sizing a tube rectifier, the same principles apply to a diode rectifier. The instant the power switch is closed, the amount of current that's available to the transformer's primary side is infinite because the capacitors in the unit act as a dead short at time equals zero. Milliseconds later, the capacitors will have enough charge on them, they will then put some uh, back pressure or offer some reactance against the incoming uh, current ohms and limit the amount of current that's actually flowing into the rest of the unit. But at time zero, that's the problem. We do not want to destroy the filter caps 
or the reservoir caps and there's got to be a way because they're large and there are other units amplifiers that have much larger capacitors at time zero the first time you energize up you can blow a cap it's dangerous and we need to figure out some way to help minimize that event the way to do that is put a current limiter in there or a thermistor The symbol for the mister is showing at the bottom. The minus T degrees means it's a NTC or a negative temperature coefficient. As it heats up, the resistance value drops. A PTC, a positive temperature coefficient thermistor, means as it heats up, it has more resistive load. The NTC is the most common in, in these types of amplifiers and devices. There's four factors that we need to consider uh, that affect inrush current. Energy, it's all about calculating the energy. That's how you figure out whether or not the thermistor is correctly sized, is how much energy can it safely dissipate. Minimum resistance that's re required of the thermistor in the circuit, the steady state current and the ambient temperature. And by that, I'm not, there are temperature derating curves. I'm not gonna go into that. I figure it this way. If you're in an environment where you have an amp playing and you're playing their guitar or other instrument through the amp, you're close enough to ambient conditions that we don't have to worry about derating the thermistor uh, for wherever it is you're playing. I figure you're not playing on the face of Mars, so we don't have to worry about this. Energy of inrush current. It is a capacitive value and a voltage value. That's the only two things that we need to know to calculate the energy required due to the inrush current. Factor for sizing. We need to know something about the line voltage, the peak, the peak inrush current, and the operating current limitation. You're probably thinking, well, where do I get that? The, the, you get it from here. We, we need to get to the schematics. The design engineers, they put this information there, and there's a few clues where we go look for this information we need. It's rather easy. If the inrush current is not known, what do we do? We look at the bridge diode specification. It will tell you uh, what the, it, they're expecting for the inrush current, and also something about the fuse. If the fuse is 5 amps, they're expecting something related, the inrush current will be related to the fuse. Or you can get an oscilloscope reading. Let's go back to the fuse. If it's a slow blow fuse, the moment the unit is turned on, it, it's not going to blow at 5 amps. It will allow something over that. I normally use a factor of 3. So if steady state is going to be 5 amps, the inrush current, I want to limit that to 15 amps. If it's a fast blow fuse, if it hits 5 amps, it's going to fuse at 5 amps and break and the unit should shut down. I want to point out a few things about a fuse. Uh, what does a fuse do? Its primary function is not to protect the appliance from going bad. It does not break to protect the amplifier. It's not designed to do that. A fuse is to prevent any further damage that can happen because the appliance, or the amplifier in this case, went bad. It's there to protect you and to keep the appliance from just burning to the ground. As we've noticed in this PV series, you'll hear me reference a few times that fuses didn't even prevent that. But that's what they're intended to do. We need to calculate the minimum resistance for the CL60, for this thermistor. What is that? It's the, v, it's the uh, peak voltage divided by the current limit. And the peak voltage peak is line voltage times line voltage variance times square root of 2. Now then, line voltage variance. It happens. You need to think that if it's, you plug in 120, it should be 120. Depending on where you are, there could be brownouts in the area. It could be under 120. Or you may be playing, and then someone switches off some other large load, another large amplifier, uh, stadium lights, whatever. And when they're switched off, inrush current and voltage comes into that gig, 
and where you're plugged in will see more than 120 volts. So the design factor is plus or minus 10%. We're going to build that in to the thermistor to help us not burn up the amp and protect ourselves from inrush current and protect the capacitors. Maximum load capacitance. The manufacturer in the table that I will show you and when we go through the example is that the maximum capacitive load the which is C max is actually the combination of the res reservoir capacitor and the filter capacitor and in this case the standby switch is not off it is on that means both of those have to be added together to give you a total capacitive load to calculate the energy that needs to be dissipated in order to limit the amount of inrush current this is the basic example 120 volts coming in we have a 5 amp slow blow fuse we have a thermistor we're trying to size that the uh, diode rectifier and the load the 100 mu f the microfarad that is the capacitive load uh, that is the value of the reservoir cap and the filter cap combined that's what we're trying to protect on smaller uh, capacitors this is such a big deal although you should go through this exercise the larger the amplifier when we start when I start seeing amplifiers over 50 watts this one's 120 watts it's a significant issue we don't want to blow those up when does the capacitor fail generally the moment the switch is thrown in a later uh, video I had that experience on this particular rebuild project I plugged it in, switched on, and the capacitor let loose, smoke went everywhere, and I thought, great, this is a problem. It happens. That's normally when it happens, not after it's run in its steady state. Assume the inrush current is three times the fuse or rectifier design value. So the fuse, slow blow fuse, is 5 amps, so we're going to set the limit for 15 amps. The line voltage is plus or minus 10%, so 10% times 120 to square root 2 is 187 volts. The energy it needs to dissipate at the capacitor if it were being charged at 120 volts would be 1.7 joules. This is the thermistor at 120 volts. We're not quite done yet. What is the minimum resistive value for the thermistor? What is the voltage peak over the current limit? limit of the uh, current. In this case it's 187 volts of I bet 15 volts or 12 ohms. That is the minimum uh, R value for resistive value for the thermistor. So in this case there are two options available to us. If you just look at ohms. A CL60 is good for 10 ohms. The CL70 is good for 16 ohms. The uh, amount of energy that can be safely dissipated by the CL60 or 70 is 36 joules. We're at 1.7. Perfect. It'll handle it. However, the CL70 will only handle between 1 and 4 amps. The CL60 is 1.2 to 5 amps. So that's clearly a better choice. Unless, of course, we know we can actually run the unit, this amplifier, at 4 amps. It's not designed there, it's designed for 5, so CL60 is what we want. There's another calculation we need to go through. The, we need to calculate the maximum, check the maximum capacitive load on the thermistor to, to run safely. The capacitive value maximum for CL60 or even the 70 is 5,000 microfarads. So the maximum capacitive load is equal to the design capacitance of the thermistor, which is 5,000 microfarads, times the square of the line voltage divided by the max line voltage square, or in this case, it's 4,100 ohms, or microfarads, and we have a 100 microfarad load. Fine. We're great. If it was switched, we'd have a problem, but it's well within design safety operations specifications. <clears throat> We're not done yet. The energy that we need to calculate is on the secondary side of the transformer. We have the filter capacitor 
and the line capacity in the reservoir, both of those are 100, uh, 100 microfarads in series or 50 microfarads. Add that together to 100 microfarads, and it's at 500 volts on the secondary side. So we need to go through and calculate the energy that the mister has to have, carry safely on the secondary side. So initially I had assumed and it would still work. Here's the the dotted capacitor is where I assumed for the illustration previous, but it's actually on the secondary side. You can do this because we're just concerned with energy. Energy in equals energy out. The joules or the energy that's on the secondary side, which we need to protect, is what we need to calculate to in order to size a thermistor on the primary side. On the secondary side is 100 microfarads times 500 volts, or that's 30 joules at 500 volts that that thermistor needs to safely dissipate. This isn't about current. This is about energy. So the energy on the output will be reflected to the energy on the input, and the thermistor will see that. <clears throat> this is what it looks like. So we're back to CL60. It's 10 ohms. That's what it'll, it'll, it'll exhibit on the line when it's at ambient temperature. It'll draw down from there. At temperature, it'll be less than an ohm. We calculate we need around 12. That's fine. It's rated for 5 amps. We have 5 amps. That's fine. 100 microfarads. We check that. It's well within the design calculations for the thermistor. We're, we're great there. We only need 30 joules. It can handle 36. We have six joules of energy left over. What is the maximum capacitor size that we are allowed? Without checking the thermistor, a lot of folks will go, I need to fix the hum or the noise or whatever on the amp. I need a bigger reservoir capacitor or I need a bigger filter capacitor. Well, how that combination with its Remember, you don't treat them separately. You have to assume the standby switch is closed and both sides, reservoir, filter, are additive. It's 100 in the amp, but how much more are we going to go? Well, you can back calculate that. So I, I, I placed in 36 joules. That's all we're allowed to dissipate for this semester. That means I calculate the total load between the filter and reservoir cap can only be 119 microfarads. You can put in another another 19 microfarads, but it don't it doesn't buy you anything. That's an odd size capacitor. So the maximum uh, capacitive load for the for the semester has been calculated. And now we want we want to look at is what about this transformer? Well, what about that? You can do the same calculation for this transformer. Maybe we want to protect that too. How much energy is uh, being uh, the transformer? How much energy is the transformer producing at inrush current conditions? We can check that. There's a couple things we need to know. The KVA transformer in this case it's 0.5 kVA is 500 volts at 1 amp or 0.5 kVA. Inrush current is set by the uh, the fuse that's on the secondary side. It's set at 1 amp. Line voltage variability plus or minus 10 percent of the 100 at 510. It gives me a range of 459 to 561 to frequency 60 hertz and the efficiency of the transformer. I'm going to assume 70. Unless I have documentation that tells me otherwise, I know it's not going to be 100%. I dare say, unless it's a high quality transformer, it's not even going to approach 90. Let's assume it's 70. One amp on the fuse. And that's this fuse. It's, it's a slow blow. I'm going to just assume one amp, 500 volts. 0.5. I'll let you come back through since the slow blow. You can change this to 3 amps and go through the calculation again. But these are where 
these are two factors we need in order to calculate the energy of the transformer being protected exhibiting on the thermistor. Four steps. We need to cal calculate KVA, the ohms inductive reactance, to calculate inductive the activity of the transformer and then calculate the energy. So first of all, calculate steady state current using the KVA reading. It's KVA over the efficiency times the minimum line voltage. And in this case is 1.5 amps. The ohms inductive reactance. Remember it's it's one amp. That's I'll let you do the calculation again at three amps. Maximum line voltage over in and rush current are 561. We need to calculate the inductivity of the transformer. It's frequency based. So it's impedance from the previous calculation, 561 ohms, divided by 2 pi frequency or 1.5 henrys. Fourth and last, calculate the energy. Is the henry times in rush current squared over 2 or 0.74 joules. If, if it were the other way, it would be three times that. But if we add the 30 joules from the capacitive calculation and the 0.74 joules for the transformer calculation. When we add that together, we get 30.74 joules. The CL60 is rated for 36 joules. We're good. I hope you found that useful. Thank you for watching.